All right, we're going to learn about breaks, page breaks, section breaks, what have you. I have this document. It's a six-page document. And right here at this section, I would like this to go ahead and start a new page. This is going to be my cover page. So what do I do to get this to move down to the top of the next page? I keep hitting my Enter key, don't I? No, this is wrong. Don't do that. Let's zoom out a little here. And I'll show you why. Because if I go ahead now and say I want to put in a picture on that page. See that? It moved everything down. Using breaks properly is going to go ahead and leave that for us. And let me show you why that happened by showing my hidden characters. And you see all of my paragraph symbols. So when I go ahead and add that picture, it just moves them all down. So what we need to do instead is insert a break. Now I'm going to go here, put it in front of where I want that new page to start. And I can go to my insert menu and choose page break. And see, it's got that little page break symbol and it will go ahead and move everything down. And there's no paragraphs here. There's no extra paragraphs. So now if I go ahead and insert a picture, I'm, I'm fine. Now that's not exactly the way I want it, and that has to do with text wrapping, and that's a different lesson. All right, so then let's go ahead and let's go down here and say that I want to put in a page break here as well. Great. Let me turn off our hidden characters. Looks good. Now, this section here, I would like this to be in two columns. So, I am going to go to my page layout and select columns 2. There, it looks great, doesn't it? Until I start to move down to my other pages and see it changed the whole document into columns. That's because what we need instead of page breaks in this situation are section breaks. And to get those, we don't see those on our insert menu. We have to go to page layout, choose breaks here, and select this little drop down. And this is where our breaks are. We are going to go to a next page section break. And I'm going to put that in here. And I'm going to scroll down and put another one in here. Now what that does is that turns this into a section instead of just putting in a page break. In fact, let me show you what happens when I put the columns in now. Whoops. I had it in the wrong place here. Let me undo that. Here we go. Get our columns in there. See that? And that only affected that section instead of the whole document. Now, while I have my columns, what if I want to go ahead? I'd rather have this column start here. Not a problem. That's another break. I'm going to stick my insertion port point in front there, go to breaks, and choose column break. And that will go ahead and break that column at the point that I want it to. All right, let's go ahead and let's move down a little bit further. We want to go ahead and put these two paragraphs into columns. So you say, okay, let's put in that break, make a section break. So we'll go to there, choose, and wow, that isn't exactly what I wanted. I wanted them to still be on here. That's because the type of break that we used was a next page section break, remember? What we needed to do was put in a continuous section break. All right, and I know you're saying it doesn't look like I did anything. That's okay. I'm going to put the next one at the end of that section, just like that. And don't worry, it pushed this down a little bit. When I go ahead here and choose columns, see it pulled it back up. And you'll see I have a section break continuous. One last thing I just want to mention real quick, even in odd page breaks, 
these are good if you are like it says have even and odd pages if you're creating a booklet with facing pages you can put those section breaks in there too so we saw page breaks column breaks next page section breaks and continuous section breaks thanks i'll see you next time thanks for watching for more information regarding our training videos please visit www.trainsignal.com